previously on board. John Mitchell, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, hi, Darren. Hi, John. Hello, Tello, John. Nice to chat to you again. Thanks for joining us today after what was, uh, I think, a weekend where most South Africans were taken a little bit uh, off guard at uh, the final result of that uh, that test match. Yeah, I think um, yeah, everyone was very excited uh, going into the test match, but I think uh, obviously the Springboks are still uh, uh, probably a little bit uh, a little bit further away off than, than most people thought. Um, but in saying that, obviously the All Blacks have set the benchmark and um, clearly they've got their issues. So I think going into the next World Cup with some aging players, yeah. which may that may not they may not experience until about year three. But I think I'm sure you know the, the other three teams and including the box have got a you know got a fair bit to chase at the moment. Yeah, just on that, and uh, and you say there are issues about you know there's still a long way to the next World Cup, and the whole idea of putting a guy like Richie McCaw in cotton wool. We know how uh, how important he is to the uh, to the All Black setup. Um, do you agree that uh, they should, and can they manage him that long ahead to a next World Cup? Well, when the springs go, Darren, as we all know, the older we get, they, they, they certainly go. So uh, um, it doesn't matter about any uh, sabbatical or any. Uh, any cotton wool, yeah, it is a risk. Um, Richie's obviously a, a superb leader and, and a superb athlete at that. But yeah, like uh, nothing's going to change the mileage that he's uh, yeah. that he's uh, completed in, in his career to date. You know, it just seems such a short time ago that he that he that he played had his hundredth win, which obviously I was very fortunate to be involved in when I selected him mm. uh, many moons ago. So uh, yeah, but you know, New Zealand also has the ability to to pop up somebody new but I, I don't know if, uh, uh, if they can find somebody as extraordinary as him yeah it's, it's like the John Smith scenario as well I think you know the, a lot of their thinking with the Springboks was also just because of his presence around the team and what he brought to the team uh, in so many other ways other than uh, just his playing and it, I mean do you think a lot of that is just to the fact that they, they just want to have Richie around for another World Cup we know what a great player he is but it's not that they haven't got guys coming through that you can never replace a Richie McCaw, but they can certainly uh, start building a bit of experience with some new guys. Yeah, well, they've got ageing hookers. Uh, that's an issue that they'll have yeah. to deal with. Uh, they've got, uh, obviously, the ageing Richie, and they've got, obviously, I think, by you know, our next World Cup, you know, Dan Carter will be around 33. So, and, and Daniel Carter's uh, ability to, to exit from the, uh, the back 50 with that long kicking game is... Is something to me extremely impressive that Cruden doesn't quite have or or has the ability to control the game. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, at the end of the day, self-preservation in elite sport, for for that matter, in any any level of uh, of work, is, uh, is 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 a dangerous uh, animal to deal with. And how you calibrate or you know what, what timing do you leave? But I, I think Richie's probably an individual that if if his actions. Uh, um, you know, cannot be followed. I think he'd be the first person to put his hand up and say, "Look, you know, it's all over for me." Yeah. All right, and it's about cycles, isn't it? I mean, the All Blacks World Champions are still, still coming sort of around about the top of their cycle. Uh, the Springboks are, are kind of at the other end, but just trying to sort of moving up from the bottom of their cycle at the moment. And uh, as I was saying on the weekend, whatever happens in this game, uh, get behind the side because they are going places. And when you start adding people like Bismarck and Skulks and, and those guys together with what we've got now, uh, Springbok rugby supporters don't have too much to be concerned about at this stage. Well, I think there's an abundance of talent. It's, it's up to, to Heineken and his selection team to, to create the right mix. You know, mm. I still think there's a place for Pat, Pat Lambie in the front line of, you know, of the back line. Um, I think uh, leadership is, is, is obvious to, to Bismarck when he, when he comes. Uh, that I think always, you know, in these days in contemporary rugby, I think uh, you know, a world-class player has a greater influence uh, on, the, on the referee and certainly his teammates. So yeah, I think uh, that the team mix has uh, got opportunity to become better. I think their first phase attack is is showing um, you know tactical awareness and, and exploiting um, you know opportunities and weaknesses in the in the opposition. But you know the three areas that are concern me that need to be addressed is uh, I'm, I'm not a great believer in the out and defence, which uh, which suffered on the weekend and, and was costly to them. I still think the forward pack outside of um, set piece has to work harder. Um, it has to outwork its forward pack and certainly outmuscle its forward pack. And I think, uh, uh, yeah, in transition between attack and defence, so I think they can have a, a greater in, uh, greater influence and continuity for me. Like uh, building pressure with the ball to me is not not still a a, com- um, a confidence amongst the group. It's of, uh, still very much into stop start rugby, which uh, 
uh, which concerns me. Mm. One of the uh, areas where the All Blacks did impress me uh, amongst, I mean, just the fact that they're a classy outfit, was uh, was their second half performance. I mean, remember we they playing up at uh, at a high altitude, yeah. And uh, we, we know what an effect Ellis Park would have. I don't think it'd be any different playing at, uh, at the F&B Stadium in front of 80,000 mostly um, frothing Springbok supporters. Uh, and you thought, well, maybe there might be an issue around fitness and, and, and the altitude in the second half. But they actually, despite the fact the Springboks played badly, I think they were very impressive the way they kept it together and seemed to be a side that is fit enough for 90 to 100 minutes now. Well, they see the opportunity, you know, in any free kick receipt ball, as you saw, uh, they, they get excited by that, but they've also got an extremely good attacking platform, and they don't get a lot of cre- uh, given a lot of credit for their defence, which is obviously the best in the competition. Yeah. When you look at the measurements, uh, you know, um, so the, the, they're clearly a side that uh, can exploit you know, one-on-ones. Um, they, they go to the space more than looking looking towards the contact. You know, they they ask the defence to 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 advance and make the contact. Um, so that's the subtle difference, I guess. They they have compared to um, the other teams that possibly look for contact. So the, you know, they'll take whatever they, yeah, you know, whatever they can get. Yeah, thoroughly uh, impressive performance from the All Blacks, uh, class act all round. And uh, John, now are, are we uh, is South Africa? Are, are we losing you, or is this just a temporary thing? Are we here at, um, uh, about the sales sharks possibly in in your future? Well, legally, I'm still. Uh, you know, head coach of the line, so that, that, that <laughs> remains. Um, but you know this. You know this world. It's, uh, it's yes. full of speculation. So, uh, you know, to me, I've got uh, you know, some media work um, uh, in the country. I've got a number of options actually in the country, and also I've got options outside the country. So, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's uh, I've got choices, but I'm still uh, legally the, the head coach of the line. So, uh, still red and black at this stage, uh, boys. All right, so that's yeah. still the priority at the moment. So just see what, what whatever comes out of that first and then take it from there. You know, I'm still in South Africa, so uh, too cold, uh, the UK, for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's all the legal guys, just to take their time on that whole thing. Uh, well, it's good to have you. Nice to watch you on Supersport, as always, John. Yes, thanks a lot for John. joining us on Balls Radio with your insight today again. Okay, Cheers. thank you, guys. All the best, bye, John. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. John Mitchell. So there we go. He says it's uh, still priority for him, uh, sorting out this whole Lions debacle. Um, oh, I if he'd want to still be head coach of that side after all the players that they've lost.